As Bleach was coming to a close in 2016, and despite Kubo's best efforts in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it quickly became apparent that unfortunately there would still be several unseen Bankai left over by the series end, which of course is a shame. However, at the same time, it means fans like ourselves now get the chance to speculate and to come up with our own theories regarding what we think these missing Bankai could actually be. And I've yet to really broach the subject of Bankai theory crafting on this channel in full, and so to get the ball rolling, I wanted to look at a character who I think is intriguing but underused. One of the oldest captains in the Soul Society and somebody who deserved far better than the story gave him, being of course Jushiro Ukitake. Now, Ukitake is a special case because I think there is a chance we'll still get to see his Bankai in the future. Should this mysterious Hell arc actually ever manifest, it seems like Ukitake could play some kind of a role from within Hell itself. However, I still wanted to do this video, as right here and now we have no idea if that is ever actually going to become a thing. And so I have here about three ideas for potential Bankais for Ukitake, kind of based on what we know, what little we know from the story itself. But of course, this video's totally speculative, it's just for fun, and I'd love to know, as part of this, what your potential ideas for a Bankai for Ukitake are in the comments below. So before we look at ideas for his Bankai, I think it's crucial to look at Ukitake Shikai and see what we actually know from the canon storyline itself. Ukitake Shikai being, of course, Sogyo no Kotawari. So what do we know about this Zanpak Toe? Well, it's a dual-bladed Zanpak Toe, one of the few that actually exist in the Soul Society, and it has a theme surrounding this idea of Pisces, the twin fish, and its singular ability, it seems, is the power to absorb an enemy's attack, alter it slightly in a way that makes it more dangerous and unpredictable, and then fire it straight back at them. Absorption and reflection. It's actually quite simplistic for a captain seemingly so powerful. Sogyo no Kotowari's release command is all waves become my shield, all thunder become my blade, which despite sounding pretty badass, if we look at, say, his closest contemporary Kyoraku Shunsui, we can see that particularly where these longer release commands are concerned, they can be a little bit nebulous and may or may not relate in any way to the power the Zanpakuto actually holds. Despite that, all of the Bankai ideas I have here share common themes, those themes being the idea of duality, reflection, and crucially, defense, as I think that plays best into the personality we've seen of Ukitake so far. Now, while I don't think because they are in many ways contemporaries, Kyoraku and Ukitake's Bankai have to share anything in common whatsoever, I think they would perhaps share their penchant for theatrics, much in the same way as Kyoraku creates a disturbance in the atmosphere, making the entire area around him feel very dark and gloomy, bringing about a sort of early nightfall when he activates his Bankai, I think Ukitake is going to do something similar to sort of set the stage for what is coming. But I think Ukitake's would be simpler and it would basically probably just start raining. Now it's funny, before Ukitake's Zanpakuto's ability was actually revealed, whenever he was utilised in something like a video game, they would run with the idea that his Zanpakuto's powers would be based around water and lightning based off of his release command. Then of course his Shikai is actually revealed in the fake Karakura Town arc and it's nothing like that really at all. That being said, I think there could be something there regarding that kind of theming, this idea of water, of reflection ripples. I'd love to see that sort of thing kind of play into what Ukitake's Bankai could actually be, hence the rainfall. I think crucially when talking about Ukitake's Bankai, it would give him the ultimate defense. He would be a very defensive fighter. You see it when he steps in to save Kyoraku, his Zanpakuto is all about taking attacks and then giving them out rather than being the preemptive one. And I think that makes a lot of sense for Ukitake's personality. He is a sort of kind, generous man who perhaps doesn't really want to be involved in conflict. We see him lamenting the fact that the peace they have 
have currently can't last, and I think that would bleed into his Zanpak toe as a representation of his soul as well. So this first idea for Ukitake's Bankai is something we've discussed lightly before on the channel in the video about his Beyond Bankai form that we got in Bleach Brave Souls. Back then, I thought that because we had never seen Ukitake's Bankai in the story itself, this offered an intriguing glimpse into a potential future where we did actually get to see it, and his Bankai could perhaps take elements from what we see in this game. And I still believe that. I think that one of my ideas for Ukitake's Bankai, perhaps the simplest one, is that it is simply an upgrade on his current ability, which is technically what all Bankai are supposed to be, essentially a blown out version of the Shikai, but we've seen Kubo take some liberties with that and things have changed around a bit between Shikai and Bankai. But if we were to look at it at its most simplistic, I think it could act in many ways like the Quincy Slave Ray ability. But rather than having total domination over Reishi, Ukitake simply takes an attack as he would do in Shikai and then makes it his own. So much like Slave Ray, which we get to see in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, when the Sternritter Kyrge OP absorbs the Hollow Ion and literally begins to wear him on his own body, I think we could see that with Ukitake. In fact, in his form in Bleach Brave Souls, he's done just that, absorbed Kyoraku's Kage Oni ability and now wears those black shadows on his body. I think this is the simplest answer for what Ukitake's Bankai could be, and I think it could be pretty plausible. Basically, someone fires an attack at him, he literally absorbs the attack into himself, and then rather than firing it straight back out, it, it, it is added to his visual design in some way, and then he can use that, incorporate it into his own attacks moving forwards. That's a pretty simple one, but I could easily see it. And once again, the key here is that dichotomy between how slavery is used, which is a forceful, domineering ability which steals power. Ukitake is again slightly more passive. Somebody would still have to attack him first for him to be able to take their ability. Now, whether he actually robs them of their power or not, I'm not sure. That seems to be pretty powerful to me, maybe slightly too powerful, but I like the idea that he can absorb it. They still keep their power, but it now also belongs to him as well. It's cool as well, because if we go back to the theming of reflections, of water, of mirrors with Ukitake, it could mean that his opponent ends up feeling like they are looking at a reflection of themselves. Another slightly more out there idea I had for Ukitake's Bankai is we take this theming of Pisces quite literally, this idea of the twin fish. We see in the Zanpak To Rebellion filler arc that he has two Zanpak To spirits, those two little children that make up Sogyo no Kotowari, and we bring that out into the into the world around him. We materialize that very idea. So Ukitake activates Bankai and it creates an entirely second version of himself. Now, it's not a literal copy like, say, Gremmy could do. It's more an ethereal, maybe like rippling water version of Ukitake, some kind of weird, wispy, smoke-like version of himself. It takes one of the Zanpak toe that he has, perhaps they are no longer connected, but they are separated in this form. And then this kind of shade version of Ukitake acts as a defensive shield. It doesn't fight, it doesn't launch its own attacks, but it acts completely defensively, protecting him from as much harm as it possibly can. An enemy would lunge at the real Ukitake, the shade version of Ukitake would get in its way as often as it possibly could, allowing Ukitake himself to dish out some damage. Honestly, I think that would be an, a really cool idea. It's not really like anything we've ever seen in Bleach. We've seen clones, don't get me wrong. Characters like Zomari, like Soifon can create after images of themselves by moving incredibly quickly. And Gremi can literally create the real thing. I think this would be different. It's like a living shadow of Ukitake's, his twin in that sense, Pisces brought to life. And I think that would be really, really cool. I think that would be a neat idea, a neat way of bringing this idea of the twinned fish and actually utilising it as part of his Bankai. Ukitake is literally one half 
of the twin fishes in this scenario. And excuse some of the crudely drawn images that I created for this, I thought it might work better with some kind of visual aids as well to kind of get across better what I'm thinking regarding his Bankai. And the third and kind of final Bankai idea I have for Ukitake is one that I came up with about seven years ago, 2015 I think it is, which is really kind of scary to think about. Um, and the name for this one, the only one I actually really came up with a name for, but perhaps it could apply to all of them, was Great Shield of the Twin Fish. And basically, Ukitake activates his Bankai. As with the other two, it starts raining, you know, just creating that moody atmosphere around him. And he gains a sort of crystalline, Byzantine-coloured armour. A collar comes around one side. Uh, actually, I suppose it would be, it would be this side, because it would be his left-hand side comes around his arm, his, his uh, neck and runs down his arm. It glitters in the light like fish scales and his blade merges back into one. It becomes a lot longer, but it is only a singular blade. And that on the surface is all that this version would appear to do. However, as soon as an enemy attempts to attack Ukitake, they would find that their attacks kind of stop some way in front of him, instead hitting a sort of rippling wall in the air. This version of Ukitake's Bankai would create a totally impenetrable 360 degrees worth of defence that the enemy at the moment cannot see. And actually, this is very similar in some way to Yamamoto's Zanka no Tachi West, which starts out totally invisible, but offers him complete protection. This would be very much a similar sort of deal, except this is not perhaps quite as elegant as Yamamoto's, which is very much form-fitting, when Ukitake would reveal this version of his Bankai, four enormous shields would come crashing down, one on each sort of side of him, and they would depict the twin fish upon them, and they would be bound by massive ropes. They could even be ropes similar to the ones we see utilised in his Bleach Brave Souls form with the talismans hanging from them as well. I think that would be pretty cool. I loved the idea of Ukitake having this priestly feel to him in his Bankai, and I think that should remain as well. But basically, these four shields would absorb energy from enemies' attacks, physical or magical, doesn't really matter what, and eventually, over time, they would collect and coalesce this energy before blasting it back out at the enemy as a much bigger, you know, collection of power. This idea of absorption and reflection, but here it is considerably more delayed. And Ukitake's defense as well is encapsulated above him and below him. It is completely 360 degrees. That collected energy can also be transferred to Ukitake's singular blade in this form as well to deal a bit more damage. And his ultimate ability, simply known as Reflection, turns one of the shields into a mirror, and then when the opponent attacks it, they are effectively attacking themselves. Now, how balanced are these ideas for his Bankai? How potentially overpowered are they? I don't really know. That's not what I was here to discuss. I just wanted to come up with some ideas, some potential ideas for a Bankai for Ukitake and for Sogyo no Kotowari, kind of based on what little we know and have seen in the story itself. But there is one final possibility for his Bankai as well, and this one I'm not quite so sure about, but there's a possibility that it could involve Mimi Hagi in some way, the right arm of the Soul King that has basically been a part of Ukitake since he was a very small boy. Now, in the Hell chapter that we received from Kubo, Ukitake's hell epithet, I guess you could call it, is the Kamikaki Godsworn, you know, the divine possession. And that's interesting because to me it seems like when they went to hell and were kind of given these epithets, it almost like it, it sort of looked into their, the very core of their being and identified who they really were. Yamamoto, at his heart, was the founder of the Gote 13, but Unohana was the Blade of Death. That's who she truly was. And so Ukitake being given this title of Godsworn, Divine Possession, it, imp it does imply that this kind of Mimi Hagi that lived within him, that kept him alive for so long, it really was a part of who he was. And it makes sense to me as well, because he was such a young boy when he was afflicted with that disease and needed Mimi Hagi uh, to, you know, form that contract with him. I think 
Therefore, there could be some way that Mimihagi plays a role in Ukitake's Barnakite. What would that role be? I don't really know. Mimihagi has the powers of stagnation, we know in, in opposition to Pernida's progression abilities. So it's possible then that rather than absorption and reflection, perhaps he simply absorbs and removes. That ability is just gone, perhaps it can't be used in this fight anymore. That opponent has stagnated. It's really difficult to say how Mimihagi would actually factor in to a Bankai for Ukitake, but I could see it happening regardless because of their connection that they share. For me, though, since Sogyo no Kotowari has literally nothing to do with Mimihagi outside of the fact that Kubo probably hadn't quite thought about that detail yet when he revealed the Shikai in Fake Karakura Town. I think I would rather keep the Bankai and the Shikai separate and make the Mimihagi possession an entirely separate part of Ukitake's character to really continue to build on this guy who we didn't really get to see enough of in the series. But that's it for my speculation, my theories, my ideas on what Ukitake's Bankai could be. I've got three or four there for you. Let me know in the comments below which you like best, if any at all, or if you think I'm way off base. I'd love to know your theories and thoughts for Ukitake's Bankai in the comments below as well. Please do let me know. Guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video for more Bleach content like this every single week. And give the video a thumbs up if you got to the end and you enjoyed it. I really do appreciate the support. Thank you so very much. And of course, a massive and everlasting thank you goes out to all of the patrons for my channel as well. I really appreciate it and frankly, couldn't do it without you. So thank you so very much. But that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.